Obsidian research clearly showed that the earliest inhabitants of the Eastern Sierra region, people living 7,000 to 10,000 years ago, were not tied down to a single territory, and their hunting probably carried them great distances beyond the confines of the Owens Valley. With the passage of time, however, there was a definite and continual decrease in the distance that people were traveling. By 2,500 years ago, the radius of people's movements had shrunk to a few hundred miles. By a thousand years ago, people were clearly moving between their village and a single quarry, traveling a radius of little more than 30 miles during the course of the year. Beginning around a thousand years ago, we see a number of sweeping changes in the archaeological record of Owens Valley, so that life begins to appear very much like that of the Paiute people that were living there at the time that Europeans arrived. Spear thrower is replaced by the bow and arrow. Many food resources like pine nuts are used more intensively than they ever have been before. And many of the village and other occupation sites are inhabited for longer periods of time throughout the year. We also see evidence that obsidian and other kinds of resources are now being obtained from only the nearest sources or quarries to these village sites. Maybe we're just looking at a classic example of resource exploitation. Early in time, the hunters were taking the best of the big game. But as population levels increased, hunting pressure on the herd also increases. Then along comes the bow and arrow, which is a much more efficient weapon than the atlatl. It lets a hunter kill game from a greater distance, and so there's more predation on the herds. With the herds on the way out, the people in Owens Valley had to turn to a different subsistence strategy. And what they turned to was exploiting resources that are pretty labor intensive. There's a lot of pinion pine exploitation, small grass seed collection. They even start irrigating on the fans of the valley. Throughout all of this, population levels are probably continuing to drift up. You get to a point where a group of families living on a creek can't simply pick up and move to a next creek when their resources dwindle because they'll just be running into the territory of somebody else. Hydration analysis was a wonderful tool for us we soon figured out another way to use it. We decided to go back to the quarries and date the chipping debris that the flint knappers had left behind to figure out what that would tell us about the quarrying activities over time. Another pattern emerged. Each of the obsidian quarries showed the same rise in flint knapping over time, culminating in the highest level of activity about a thousand years ago. Then suddenly the obsidian production comes to an abrupt halt and the quarries are for the most part abandoned. Now that peak of activity corresponds nicely to what we have come to believe was sort of a golden age of California prehistory. Native cultures were flourishing at this time, and we believe there was a vast trade network between Eastern California and the coast. The obsidian quarries were the engines of that system. Now why it all collapsed? Well, that's a different story. Sometimes our people have difficulty with archaeology. It steps on the boundaries of our sacredness and our, our belief in our objects that you leave them alone when you find them. But in this area, it is proven that we have been here for a much longer time than people would want us to believe. There are a lot of questions that remain unsolved in Owens Valley. What the science has revealed is a history of movement from the deep tectonic movement of the continents to the wide migrations of people across a vast expanse of the West to the particular movement of small pieces of precious glass in the hands of those who worked and used it. For those of us lucky enough to work in this part of the world, Obsidian provides a detailed window onto the past by employing obsidian hydration and the chemical sourcing or fingerprinting of glass, we're able to track the movement of individual pieces of obsidian or artifacts through time and across space. And by doing that, to track the movement and behavior of prehistoric people in greater detail than is possible almost anywhere else on Earth. Last summer, we found a cache of artifacts that was amazing. Next to Highway 395 on a Caltrans-sponsored dig, we uncovered a set of 12 obsidian cores. 
These shapes were made because they were easily carried over long distance, and we found them exactly in the place they were left. In addition to the set of cores, we found a series of flakes that would have fallen to the ground as the flint napper worked. We, of course, did hydration analysis on the cores, and they turned out to be 4,000 years old. Further XRF studies would give archaeologists a geochemical fingerprint. The rocks originated at an obsidian quarry near Mono Lake, more than 90 miles away. What did it all mean? Here was an ancient traveler, a flint napper, who had spent some time at a distant quarry. He had traveled many days, tracing his way back through the Owens Valley. He had stopped to rest. He worked the stones while he rested. Then he buried some of them, obviously intending to come back for them at a later date. This obsidian was precious to him. He had spent a good deal of his time to get it this far. And for whatever reason, he never again returned to pick up his cash. Now, 4,000 summers would pass. Eight thousand full moons would arc across the night sky. And then we pulled up in our truck and we excavated this very spot. And now I'm holding what that flint napper held in his hand four thousand years ago.